Imagine if it was possible to predict in which country the next war will break out, and that we could identify the causes of any potential conflict and try to fix it before it's too late. I know, it sounds almost like science fiction, but if you think about it for a moment, nowadays we make predictions about practically everything. Data science has shown us that all we need to make prediction is, well, data. This guy analyzed all conflicts that have been recorded in the last two centuries, and here is what he found out. This video is about data science in conflicts and warfare. By now we all know that if you have a sufficient amount of data, you can make predictions basically about everything, from future business trends to weather forecasts to the probability of a company's default. So it's fair to ask whether it is possible to use data science also to make predictions about war and conflicts in general. Well, the use of data science in military and defense is definitely not new. Take the Monte Carlo simulations, for example. Monte Carlo simulations is a statistical method that has actually little to do with Monte Carlo casinos, but it was invented during the Second World War, in the so-called Manhattan Project, which was the American secret project to develop the first atomic bomb. Also, machine learning and AI have been used for decades already in the military and intelligence sector for surveillance, border and space management, operational planning, logistics, pattern recognitions, and much more. Now, the question is if we can actually do more than that. For example, it would be amazing if we could use data science to determine where, when, and with what probability the next conflict might break out. Or maybe you have already asked yourself whether wars are actually becoming less frequent than in the past. Or if there is any periodicity or any pattern at all in the way conflicts happen. Well, there is an English mathematician, Lewis Fry Richardson, who managed to analyze all conflicts he could find record of occurring between 1820 and 1950. And here is what he found out. Richardson ordered all conflicts in his database according to the number of victims occurring in each conflict. Then, he defined the magnitude of a conflict by taking the logarithm of the number of victims. So, for example, conflicts that resulted in the death of one person are given the value of zero. And this is the case of individual murders. Next, we find conflicts of small-medium size, like fights between criminal gangs or terror campaigns that can end up with a few dozen victims. And so on, up to the larger conflicts. At the end of this list, there are only two conflicts which are classified with a magnitude greater than 7, and those are the two world wars. Now we have the entire spectrum of human violence on a single scale. At this point, we represent on the y-axis the number of times a conflict of a certain magnitude has occurred in the last two centuries. For example, for conflicts of magnitude zero, Richardson's list includes millions of cases. On the other hand, there have been so far seven conflicts of magnitude six. Among these super conflicts, we can find the civil war in North America, the Bolshevik Revolution and the Spanish Civil War. Well, at this point you probably already noticed one of the most interesting parts of this analysis. That is, in this logarithmic scale, the frequency of the conflicts has a linear trend. The slope of a logarithmic plot gives usually the power of a relationship between the data, and a straight line is an indication that a precise power relationship exists. Now, power relationships are famous in nature because they describe a sort of scaling effect, for example, we find power relationships in the distribution of mass in the universe or in fractals or even when we want to describe the distribution of income in a population. In other words, the fact that we can reduce all conflicts on a straight line is kind of evidence that there is some law that connects all conflicts, no matter the size. So there must be some behavioral patterns that might explain both the crimes of a serial killer and the casualties of a civil war. These patterns might be economical, cultural, or historical. Well, then let's go even further, and let's try to see if we can spot some of these patterns. To do that, we'll concentrate only on conflicts with a magnitude larger than 3. Let us go through the Richardson list and count the number of wars that can be observed within each year. And let's build a diagram like this. If in a certain year there were no wars, we add one block to the leftmost part of the diagram. 
If we find a year with one conflict, we have the block in the next value on the x-axis, and so on if there were two conflicts and more. This graph describes the frequency of war outbreaks. That is, it tells us which is the probability that a given number of wars, or even no wars at all, will occur within the next year. Once again, what we obtained is a curve that is well known to scientists. This is a Poisson distribution. You would use the Poisson distribution to describe how often a random event occurs in a certain time period. If you study physics, an example would be radioactive decay. But you would also observe the same distribution if you looked at the number of phone calls arriving each day at a call center. Well, if wars can be described by a Poisson distribution, then wars are independent random events. Independent and random means that on a given day, there is always the same probability that war will break out. So, said otherwise, according to Richardson's study, conflicts occur much more randomly than we might think. Of course, saying that wars are random events does not mean that we cannot try to predict them. In much the same way as investors try to make predictions about the market, even though the market is random. You just need to Google it for a few minutes and you'd find a ton of studies on this topic. For example, one of the most recent studies that I was able to find was carried out by two students of the Sorbonne University who applied machine learning to determine for each country in the world what is the probability that a war will break out in the next five years. Just as a disclaimer, the model was calibrated before 2019, so without taking into account how the world has changed over the last two years of pandemic. For example, according to their model, Russia was more likely to go to war than Western Europe, but much less than other countries, which instead turned out to be relatively stable, like Indonesia or Pakistan. But still, this can already give you an idea of how much more there is to discover in the world of data science applied to conflict and warfare. And that is all for today. But before you jump into the next video, what is your opinion on this sensitive topic? Do you think it's really possible to use machine learning and AI to make predictions about wars? And also, which could be the ethical implications? Well, let me know and feel free to leave some comments below. In the meanwhile, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.